Hello, children. I'm uh, really happy to bring you another story. Um, you may not recognize me with my mask on, but it's uh, Reverend Margaret again. Uh, this time, I'm not going to be using the puppets. I just want to tell you a story about a wonderful, wonderful little boy. And I think it will help you appreciate the Easter season uh, in a very positive and God-loving way. So here we go. You'll see a bunch of pictures and you'll hear my voice. And I want to wish you all a very happy Easter. So the story I'm going to tell you today is about a little boy named Philip. It really is a wonderful Easter story. It's a story about a child who had some trouble thinking, but oh, he was so smart about God. Now, meet Philip. He's a good friend and isn't he a very happy looking young boy? Philip was born with Down syndrome. So that meant he had more trouble thinking than other children his age. He was a very pleasant child, happy it seemed, but increasingly aware of the difference between himself and other children. Philip went to Sunday school faithfully every week with nine other eight-year-olds. Now, Sunday school can be really fun. You get to be with different kids than you are with at school, and you have different teachers. Oh, but let me go back to Philip. You know what eight-year-olds are like sometimes. Philip, with his differences, was not readily accepted. But his teachers were very sensitive to Philip, and he helped this group of eight-year-olds learn to love each other as best they could in his Sunday school class. They did learn, they laughed, they played together, and they really seemed to learn to care about one another even though eight-year-olds don't say that they care about one another, at least they don't say it out loud. But don't forget there was an exception to all this. Philip was not really a part of the group. Philip did not choose, nor did he want to be different, but different he was. And that was the way things were. There was nothing he could do about it. Okay, Philip's teacher had a marvelous idea for his class the Sunday at Easter. You know those things that pantyhose used to come in? Now, I remember this because I'm much older than you guys by a long shot, but they you used to buy your nylons in containers that looked like great big Easter eggs. The teacher had saved 10 of them from his wife. The children loved it when he brought them into the room and gave one to each child. It was a beautiful spring day and the assignment was for each child to go outside, find the symbol for new life, put it into the egg and bring it back to the classroom. They would then open them and share their new life symbols and surprises, one by one. It was glorious and confusing. It was wild. They ran all around the church grounds, gathering their symbols, and then returned to the classroom. They put all the eggs on a table and then the teacher began to open them. All the children gathered around the table. He opened one and there was a flower and they oohed and awed. He opened another and there was a little butterfly. Beautiful, the girls all said, since most of the boys who are eight do not say beautiful. 
He opened another and there was a rock. And as third graders will, some laughed and some said, that's crazy. How's a rock supposed to be like new life? But the smart little boy who'd put it in there spoke up. That's mine. And I knew all of you would get flowers and buds and leaves and butterflies and stuff like that. So I got a rock because I wanted to be different. And for me, that's new life. They all laughed. And here you can see the picture of the flower, the picture of the butterfly, and the rock. The teacher said something about the wisdom of eight-year-olds and opened the next Easter egg. But there was nothing inside. The children, as eight-year-olds will, said, that's not fair, that's stupid. Somebody didn't do it right. Then the teacher felt a small tug on his shirt and he looked down. It's mine, Philip said, it's mine. And the children said, you do not get things right, Philip. There's nothing in there. This time, Philip spoke back. I did do it right, said Philip. The tomb is empty. There was silence, a very long silence. And for you who believe or don't believe in miracles, I want to tell you that one amazing thing happened that day. From that time on, it was different. Philip suddenly became a part of that group of eight-year-old children. They took him into their group. He was set free, like Jesus, to be included with his friends. Philip did not live long, as there were many other things the matter with his body. His family had known since the time he was born that he wouldn't live uh, past his childhood. At his memorial service, the children from his Sunday school marched up to the altar along with their Sunday school teacher. They marched right up to the altar and laid on it an empty egg, an empty, old, discarded pantyhose nylon's egg. And the tomb is empty. The children all knew that Philip, like Jesus, has been raised up to be with God. Now, my friends, I do want to wish you Happy Easter, but remember as you enjoy your Easter candy, The real reason for Easter is that Jesus rose again and is alive and seated with God.